Hello, and welcome to the Hempville CBD Podcast. I'm your host, Ben Cooey. I'm an entrepreneur in the cannabis industry with my business, Hempville CBD. This podcast is dedicated to educating you on CBD and how it can positively impact your life. Also, we'll feature professionals in the cannabis market and share their expertise in the marketplace. Join us on this enlightening journey that will enrich your appreciation of the dynamic cannabis marketplace. Follow us at HempfieldCBD.com. And as always, there's an open invitation to come visit us at the store in South Haven, Mississippi. Now, let's get to it. Hello, and welcome, everybody, to the Hempville CBD Podcast. My name is Ben Cooey, owner of Hempville, Hempville CBD in South Haven, Mississippi. I'm sitting here with my producer, Derek Michaud. He's the one who makes everything happen on the podcast. And today, we want to talk about the number one category segment in the hemp and cannabis industry, which is, do you know? Flower. No, but it, you're getting close. Gummies. Edibles. 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 And yes, we're going to dis- <clears throat> make a distinction. We, it's easy to say gummies, but it's more than just gummies. Oh, it's a lot more. Now, right. before we get into edibles, I kind of want to uh, reflect back on what we talked in, in the last episode, which is THCA, which is quickly coming up as far as categories. They're probably number two now, and it's probably going to take over edibles. THCA is a natural compound within the hemp plant. It's usually found in smokable or vape products, and there's a reason for that. And that is when THCA, even though it's non-psychoactive, when it's exposed to heat, that A or the acid, the acetope, will fall off and it becomes THC, and therefore it is uh, now a psychoactive cannabinoid. Now, when I say psychoactive, that does not mean you're going to be blitzed out of your mind and you're, you're going to think aliens are coming down to, to get you or anything like that. Nobody wants that. <laughs> but And some people who don't use this, that's what they're thinking. When I say psychoactive, I, I mean more like a meditation state. When I take it, uh, it just slows things down for me. It's a good end-of-the-day uh, relaxation uh, tool. It allows me to be more creative. It allows me to reflect back on things. Uh, I'm completely functional on it, but because it's slowing things down for me, uh, don't fool yourself. Don't get in a car and start driving or operating heavy machinery because that's when mistakes are going to happen. Even if you didn't make a mistake, if you're on THCA or have smoked it or vaped it, get in the car and drive and you get pulled over, you're going to get arrested for a DUI. Even though it's a legal product, uh, beer is a legal product too. But if, if, if you drink too much of it and then get in the car, you're going to get in trouble. These products are the same. Use way. responsibly. Correct. Now, THCA is, I, I love the compound. It does so much. But what it, it, it's a win for the customer, but it's a win for the retailer like me. And here's why. For the customer, if you want to go into a marijuana dispensary, First, you got to have a card to let you in, and you're going to have to pay for that card, renew it every two months. Then when you go in and purchase, your purchase is not private because once you get that card, your name goes into an FBI database. Every sale, every purchase that you have with the, with the marijuana is tracked by the FBI and regulatory organizations. Also, they put a cap on how much you can buy. I don't know what that cap is for Mississippi, but I know when they were developing the rules, the governor had come out and said, well, you can make 10 to 11 joints with three and a half grams of flour. That's all you need to buy. That's impossible. The average joint has one gram in it. So with three and a half grams, you're only going to be able to make three and a half joints. And that's if there's no waste waste with it. And there's always waste. Now, the problem with that is if you're somebody with high pain thresholds, if you're somebody with cancer, uh, the effect of a, a smokable product is only two to three hours. So think if you have cancer and you're going through chemo or if you have constant pain due to operations or arthritis, if you're only allowed one joint a day or three and a half a week, you're going to have to pick your spots on where to do that, and it's not nearly going to be enough for you. Uh, that's, and also with the customer, if you have a medical marijuana card or just a recreational mer- mer- medical marijuana card, you are not going to, you've given up your right to buy a gun. Um, and some people might say, hey, that, that's not a big issue for me. I'm not worried about that. If you don't have a gun and it's not an issue for you, it's never an issue until you need it. And it's, it's kind of like this. 
It's kind of like the story I told you, I think, last episode of the guy who said he was completely against all the products in my store. He voted against medical marijuana in our state, and here he is in my store buying product. And the reason he was, and he asked, he said, you know why I'm here? Because I got diagnosed with cancer. The medicine's not working like it should. The chemo's wearing me out. And, and you know, when you're faced with something like that, you're willing to try anything, especially if it's all natural and, and it's going to help you and not hurt you. It's it's the same same thing with the gun, with the gun. Have somebody break in your house at twelve o'clock at night. Uh, a baseball bat just isn't going to do it, especially if there's more than one person. And so I don't feel comfortable giving up that privilege or right uh, during this these days because these days, if you misgender somebody, you might be able to be arrested. But I mean, we all know in a community not too far from here. Somebody was doing an illegal gun deal, killed a 15-year-old in the process, and was let out with no bail on his own recognizance. He's the type of person that you're supposed to be protecting the community from, and he's out running around with no penalty at this point. And so that's always a concern when people say, hey, I'm not worried about that. It's never a worry until you need it. Now, for the, for the customer, you come into a shop like mine and buy THCA flour, it is going to, it, one, you don't have all those hoops and, and hurdles you got to jump through. You don't need a card. Your sale is completely private. Your name's not in a, you know, in a database being tracked. Uh, you don't go give up any rights such as gun ownership or, or going being able to go buy a gun. But also, uh, you can buy as much as you want. We sell three and a half grams of THCA flour. For 35 bucks. If you walk into a dispensary, that's going to be 70. It's going to be at least double. And you're thinking, oh, well, it's so much better. It's the exact same. And in fact, we're having people with who, who go to dispensaries and because their need is so great because of their illnesses, whatever the limitation is in the state that they, they're in, once they reach that threshold, they're coming to our store. And they were coming to our store just to kind of fill in the gap until next week starts and they can go back to the dispensary again. But they liked our THCA flour so much. And they said, look, it looks better. The effect is better. It's cheaper. I don't have all these hurdles I got to go through. They've now given, <laughs> given up their marijuana card and are coming to our store exclusively because of that. And those are big things. That's all pluses for the customer. Now, pluses for the retailer is... I don't have all the hoops that I have to go through to get it the way dispensaries do. I can sell it for half the price as a dispensary and help the customer out too. And, and that's just a win-win for everybody. I agree. Um, <clears throat> and in fact, I brought some with me. Yes. Uh, yes, you did. I'll let you smell it. But if you look Man. at this, this is, it's it, the reason it has a shade of white on it. It's very frosty. And those are the terpenes and stuff that are on top of the bud. But I'll let you take a look at it. I don't know if yes. it'll show up on camera. So I'll, I'll get closer to the camera here. But as you can see, this is a half ounce in a glass container. And I'm telling you, from the perspective of a longtime user, this stuff smells amazing. It looks amazing. Uh, it's, you know, you would have to go deep into the bowels of, of the city to get well, the street stuff that looks like this. This you know? is another advantage we have, uh, at least here in the state of Mississippi. Uh, if you're a dispensary, you have to buy from Mississippi growers. Mm -hmm. uh, Mississippi <clears throat> growers, uh, they've only been doing this for like six, maybe eight months. They hadn't been doing it long. And growing good bud and having it right is an art form. And we're able to go out, and because we're not with the same restrictions as a dispensary, I can go to California meet growers out there that have been doing it for 50 years and have mastered the artwork and buy from them directly. And that's what, that's where that has come from. And you can look at it. That is some of the yes. best looking bud I've ever seen. And to go back to getting the information right on the cap, it says, you know, LA Kush cake, THCA 32%. Correct. You know, it's giving you that. So let me, uh, let me get this closer to the camera oh, yeah. here. Oh, well, I mean, as you look at it, uh, it's a nice, big, healthy bud. It's uh, hopefully it's showing up on film because I can't see it. It's frosty. It's got a lot of terpenes on it. It's sticky. Uh, and of course you smelled it when you open up that jar and smell it. It's like somebody slapping you in the face. I mean, it is strong. 
And that's a half ounce right there. And a half ounce from us is uh, $120. Uh, I don't know if we can give prices and stuff on uh, podcast. I know on social media like Instagram you can't, but I'm just – giving information i'm not trying to sell but that's 120 dollars. Uh, i think it's good for people to know but it's the, the other thing is you're buying that and we can trace that back from the seed into the ground there's no fentanyl on it there's no outside source and, and that's one of the big problems with street weed is now it's being laced with opioids or fentanyl to get you yeah. addicted to it Uh, a lot quicker, a lot stronger addiction. So you keep coming back. And also if you came into a store like mine and you're buying bud without the opioid on it, it's not going to have the kick to it. Uh, All those things are dangerous. And we always tell people why, why gamble with your life? Why go to the street? Well, it's my best friend. Well, your best friend might be the most honest person in the world and not going to do you wrong, but he didn't grow it. Uh, He doesn't know if there are opioids on it because it passed through so many other hands before it got to his. Why would you take that chance and not go to a reputable store and buy something that you know is going to be safe? And again, we don't want to talk numbers and price. This isn't, right. We're not trying to be a sales commercial here. But again, I like giving my perspective because of smoking marijuana for so long, the price. So in essence, it, it comes down to $30 an eighth. If 30, you break, $35 an eighth. Right. If you, so if you buy it by the eighth. Correct. Telling you right now, in the 90s, an eighth of brickweed, as we used to call it, which yeah. had a lot of stems and seeds in it, right? Or oregano. <laughs> God knows what. <laughs> Pencil shavings, all kinds of stuff. $30 an eighth. Yeah. You know, and now, if you try to get this kind of grade street wheat, they're going to oh, charge you 60 70 bucks an eighth. Uh, you, as you're talking about, the dispensaries are up that way. Yep. So I'm telling this to the people that, that just under, don't understand the cost of weed because they've never done it before. I'm telling you right now, uh, a half ounce at $120, that is, you're not going to find a better deal. It's a good deal. You might find stuff that's, that's cost less, but whenever <clears throat> you're shopping for these products, less does not always mean better. Most expensive does, does not always mean better. We try, we're kind of the middle of the road, even though we go out and we go get the highest quality product we can possibly get. I'm just saying the aroma in this room. Oh, you can almost get buzz smelling. Delightful. It. Yeah. <laughs> you can almost get buzz smelling it. Now, with THCA, like I said, if it's, it's if it's exposed to heat, it becomes a psychedelic. Um, and that's the popularity of it. Now, you will find it in gummies, in edibles. Uh, however, when you have THCA in an edible, if it was only just THCA, you would not get high or buzzed from it at all. You would get the same healing effects, such as it'll help with anxiety and nausea and inflammation and, and depression and things of that nature. But you won't get the buzz of it because the A is still attached to it when it's metabolizing in, in your stomach and going through your liver. So therefore, it's still non-psychoactive, um, which brings us, you know, that's a good segue into what we're here to talk about today, which is edibles. Edibles, the number one product out there on the market. Most people think of gummies when they're thinking of edibles, but edibles is anything you can eat or drink. Uh, We're now seeing what's also popular is cookies and chocolates and brownies, uh, Rice Krispie treats, uh, and even drinks uh, are now hitting the market. And I think the drinks will be a big uh, driver as well. There are a bunch of snacks. Oreo cookies, Doritos, things that are packaged that way. And we'll talk about some of the dangers of that uh, later on. But y- you can almost find it in anything. <clears throat> now, what are the, why is it so popular? They must, be half, they must have some great benefits with the edibles, and they do. One is it is the most discreet and private way to consume these products. Meaning, uh, if you're out, you know, if you're smoking THCA or even or weed, it, it has a heavy smell. I mean, like it, every time I, I smoke, I go out in the backyard and I might have a, a pre-roll. I have to take a shower when I come in. <laughs> my clothes smell like weed. My hair smells like weed. My skin smells like weed. And I'm, I'm standing to where the wind is blowing it away from me, yeah. but it's just so strong. That's what happens. And that's at home. So you, you can't do that at work. You, you can't even do that at home because, you know, you got kids, you got family. They don't want to smell that. Uh, or they might want to smell it depending on. You might not want them to smell it yeah, quite you might, yet. Yeah, correct. You know, let might, them grow up a little bit. <laughs> so you take a gummy, have a drink, 
that that's so discreet that it's very private to do that, which leads to it, it's also easy to travel with. I mean, if you can tr- you can put them in your purse, gummies in your purse. You can have a drink. Let's say you go to a hotel, you're at the beach. Uh, if you smoke uh, THCA or flour or pre roll in your room, the whole hotel is going to smell it. I mean, it's going to go through the walls. It's going to go through the ventilation system. Everybody's going to know what you're doing. But if you just uh, bring along some drinks uh, or bring along some gummies or an edible, you can just sit in your room, chill out with whoever you're with, and nobody knows anything different. Now, with the drinks, you know, we're starting to see it in iced teas. We're starting to see it in lemonade. These are things we have at our store, too. Iced teas, lemonades, uh, seltzer water, uh, even alcohol. Uh, we don't have alcohol in our store, but I have seen wines and other alcoholic drinks that are now infusing THC and CBD into those drinks, and they work wonderful. Uh, not only is it more convenient, but you can control your dosage more, and that's something we talked about before the show. I was like, look, if if I give you a 100-milligram gummy and all you need is 50 milligrams, what are you going to do? Break it in half. Cut it in half. It's mm-hmm. just that simple. But if you buy a 1,000-milligram uh, uh, pre-roll, how are you going to get a quarter of that out? Right. I mean, you can smoke three quarters, but it's a guessing game. And then stuff it out and save and, it for later. And, and then, then you then... stuff it out and it becomes messy. And then mm-hmm. it starts smelling, even though you're not using it. It's just more convenient. You can control your dosage and it's a little cleaner to do it with an edible. The effects. And that's what people really want to know is the effects. When you do a vape... Uh, we always say vapes are good for headaches. And the reason why is when you vape or smoke something, it takes 10 minutes to feel, but the downside is it's only going to last for two to three hours. If you take a topical or a tincture, it'll take 30 to 45 minutes for it to activate and you start feeling it. And it's going to last maybe four or five hours. But when you take an edible, depending on the milligram dose, uh, it's going to take an hour to maybe an hour and a half before you start feeling it. It all is based on your digestive system and your metabolism, and everybody's is a little bit different. However, once it starts entering the bloodstream, you're going to feel it for a minimum of six to eight hours. Sometimes you can feel it for 24 hours. Is that why people sometimes go to it for sleep? Correct. For sleep aid? They do it for sleep aid, but and the reason you could feel it for much longer it's because you took too much. And, and we'll get into how easy that is. That's one yeah. of the dangers of edibles is taking too much. But, yeah, the benefit factors of it is it's going to relax the whole body and mind. It's going to bring you to that meditation state of just peace, calm, able to reflect, able to be creative. Uh, you just don't need to drive a car. <laughs> Do it. That's why I take it at night when you're home. And, I mean, I can't say yeah. that enough because I, I can't tell you how many customers are like, I got arrested for this stuff. And I'm like, were you driving? Well, yeah, they pulled me over. And I'm like, you can't mm-hmm. be taking it while you're driving. I mean, you get home from work. Some might have a beer. Some might pour a couple ounces of whiskey mm-hmm. or have a gummy. You know, that, that. so if you're being responsible, it's just the end of the day, time to relax, time to kick back and finish the day off relaxed. Correct. And customers will be like, well, it's legal. I don't know why you're arresting <clears throat> me. I bought it legally. You did buy it legally, but like I said, you can't use mm-hmm. it. And then be driving a car that's under the influence. It's just not of alcohol. It's of another substance. So the benefit factors are great. Uh, last a long time. Uh, it's going to hit the whole body. You can control your dosage better. You can travel with it better. One thing people don't know is the bioviability of an edible. And what bioviability means is the absorption rate of that product into your system. The product that probably has the most bioability is vaping or smoking. With that, you're going to get about 56%, 55% of the milligram dosage uh, being absorbed. When you do an edible, if I give you a 100 milligram Delta 8 gummy, uh, probably about 20 milligrams of that is actually going to hit your bloodstream. The rest is going to be lost in the digestive process. Now, If you want to improve that absorption rate within your body, there are a couple of things you can do. One, eat fatty foods. Now, I don't mean go eat fried chicken at your local gas station. Even though at my local gas station the fried chicken is excellent, I I eat it about three or four times a week. 
Uh, but, you know, you can eat fatty foods such as avocados, uh, nuts, uh, omega-3 oil, uh, even dark chocolate, but it would need to be dark chocolate. Uh, because what happens is the THC will stick uh, to those fatty acids and the fatty acids will carry more of it through uh, the liver and being digested. Uh, so, and when I say it increases your absorption rate, I don't mean by two or three percentage points. I mean, you can increase it by 50%, 75%. You can go from 20 milligrams to 50 milligrams absorption simply because of the fatty foods. Now, if you're not eating the fatty foods, uh, use CBD. CBD with, and I brought you a gummy today, and we're starting to see this That's in right. the market where Delta 9 THC gummies are being combined with CBD, and there's a reason for that. The reason is CBD slows down the breakdown of THC. Now, that is good because more of it's going to hit your bloodstream, and it's not going to be lost in the digestive process. Um, and therefore, the, the feeling will last a little bit longer and be a little bit stronger. There's also a downside to that that we'll talk about on the bad things, which is, you know, it, it's weird. These products, CBD, THC, designed to take away anxiety, uh, depression, nausea, and pain. If you take too much of it, you're going to get those same symptoms. If you take, and I've done this, if you've taken way too much of these cannabinoids, you're going to get <laughs> nausea, your anxiety mm -hmm. levels will spike a little bit, you, uh, you could get headaches, which would be pain, you're going to get dizzy. Everything it's designed to prevent will now be coming back on you twice as hard. Uh, and nobody wants that. So how do you avoid that? And that's what we're going to get into. Now, all of those side effects are minor side effects. And all the side effects I'm going to talk about, uh, you're really not going to experience them unless you uh, take the product irresponsibly. You take way too much of it. That's where these things, these things will come into play. Another one is it's very easy to overeat on edibles uh, because they take so long to kick in. Uh, you know, you have one gummy and then you got to wait an hour, maybe an hour and a half and you get bored and you're like, these things aren't working. It's, I don't feel anything. So you go in and you take two or three more gummies. Uh, and then about an hour later, and we had a customer say this, this is exactly what they did. And they said, Oh, an hour later, I was praying to Jesus because their head, <laughs> their head was spinning and they had had way, way too much. And we see this in a lot of products. Uh, we were one time going to bring in, uh, some chips that looked like Doritos that had Delta nine on them. And it was a little snack bag, probably had about 30, maybe 35 chips in it. I would not be able to do that. Yeah. Well, that's why we didn't. Cause I in. just eat chips. We read the like directions crazy. and mm -hmm. the direction said only eat three chips per serving. Not going to happen. People aren't going to eat three chips. If the chips are good, they're going to keep eating them. For 45 years, I eat the chip by the bag, not the chip. <laughs> That's exactly You know, right. like, there's no way I would get so, yeah, it would and, be bad for me. And it's very easy to, to overeat on these things. And that it will give you a completely bad experience. And, yeah. and you got to take these responsibly, eat what you do. But it's hard, especially when it's in a snack form. Now, another thing that goes with it is usually with gummies, it has sugar on it. Now, Usually a gummy has about three three grams of sugar on it, and there's a reason for that, and that is these cannabinoids in their natural form taste very bitter. So they're using the sugar to kind of offset that bitterness. However, uh, and I'm not a doctor, I don't know how, if you're a diabetic, sugar is your worst enemy. So you're trying to stay away from that. I don't know how much three grams of sugar could throw you off. It's going to depend on how severe your diabetes is, but that's one thing you have to think about. Now, also, a lot of people who suffer from cancer, like my brother-in-law, uh, they use these products as well. But the one thing we're finding out through uh, research is cancer. The cancer cells survive off the sugar in your body. That's what's fueling them. And so there's a theory out there from uh, doctors and from people who have had cancer that have said, look, the, you know, I went through chemo. Didn't have not much happened. It took all these medicines, not much happened. They fasted, and when they fa fasted and got all the sugar out of their body, all of a sudden they started to improve. And the theory behind that is the cancer cells survive, they get their energy off the sugars in your body. 
when you fast and, and you know, some people, so, some people fasted for, I want to say 72 hours. I think that's three days. I don't know if I could do that, but I bet Whoa. if I had cancer, I'd be motivated to do yes. it. But they say after about 17 to 20 hours, and it's all based on your metabolism, your cells are depleting of the sugar. Once they start losing their energy source, your good cells start looking around your body and they start pinpointing the bad cells and they start attacking them and trying to fix them and repair them and do things. And so after uh, another day, 24 hours of that, you're starting to have some of those, from what people have told us, cancer cells start flushing out of your body. It's at least preventing the cancer from spreading throughout your body because they don't have the energy to do it and they don't have the energy to su sustain themselves. And so that's why it's flush flushing out. Mm -hmm. So, you, you know, in that case, gummies are good, but you might want to wash the sugar off of them because you, you know, if I had cancer, sugar would be the last thing I'd want to put in my body. And once they, you know, people say, well, you can't fast forever. Eventually you're going to have to eat. Yes, you are. But when they go back to eat after they flushed out their body, they go back to, a, I think it's a high alkaline diet, low in sugar. And uh, a lot of these people have never looked back. What about the drinks? So you said seltzers. Seltzers don't have sugar in them, right? You, some do, some don't. But the seltzers that we have and the lemonades that we have, the lemonades are, people love them. Uh, like I showed you a can of the Del Delta 9 seltzer that we had. Mm -hmm. Does great. No calories, no sugar, uh, no fats, no sodium. Uh, it does have, I think, some vitamin B in there and, and some other things. But it's really just water. Uh, carbonation and the, the extract that's infused in it with a little bit of flavoring. Uh, so it's very clean. You're not getting, you know, we, we talked about alcohol versus uh, Delta 9 drinks in the last segment. And alcohol rages havoc on your body. It hurts your immune it system. It turns into pure sugar, yeah. too. It's got a high sugar uh, content in, so it, it opens you up to getting diabetes and other illnesses uh, where the drinks do not. And a lot of our customers have said, you know, I used to be an alcoholic, but I started with these drinks and they're taking the edge off. You know, I, I was drinking alcohol just to take the edge off and chill out, but it's an addictive compound. These aren't addictive. I can have one drink a night instead of eight shots of whiskey a night. Have that one drink. I'm good all night long. It's a better effect. I'm not gaining weight. I'm not hurting my liver or my organs or my uh, immune system. And everything's good. And so that's why I think the drinks will be such a big hit because for years, uh, drinking alcohol, even in its good form, like having wine during Thanksgiving dinner or having a glass of wine at the end of the day, uh, we're just so prone to do that as adults. Uh, but there's a better way to, to handle that situation. And I'm finding out it's the Delta nine drinks that we have. So, and they just provide a good sugarless option sugarless ca no like i said no calories no sodium uh you think about all the stuff you eat during a day and most of it's processed food loaded with all those bad things uh yeah we are now trying because my brother-in-law has gotten cancer and we're finding out more and more and more uh we're trying to stay away from as much processed stuff as possible and, and it's not even the processed stuff I, I, here's an example and i don't want to go down this rabbit hole because we could do it forever. <laughs> but like apples, you go into a grocery store, you see a nice red apple. It's shiny. It has that shine on it because they, there's a chemical they spray on a lot of the fruits so that when they're going from the farm to the processing center or to the grocery store to prevent gnats and bugs getting all in it. The problem is that that, that chemical is it has cancer causing carcinogens in it. Now it's, it's such a low dose. You can eat the apple and the FDA say, says it's fine. And it is to a certain extent. We all know just like with CBD products, a lot of them have a small amount of THC, not going to get you high whatsoever. But if you're taking CBD once, twice a day, every single day of the week, over time, that little bit of, of nothing adds up to something. It's kind of like when I started my first job and I got a 401k and I'm like, I'm 20 something years old. I don't have any money for 401k. I'm trying to pay rent and a car and everything else. And your parents are like, look, just contribute. It doesn't matter if you're putting $50 a day in it, just do it. And so I, I at that point I got a Roth IRA 
put $50 a month in it, didn't think anything about it. 20 years later, I got $25,000, $30,000 in that account. Now, that's not all my retirement. I have had other jobs where a lot of that's in. But my point being, that little $50 amount now, $30,000, I can go try to start another business or, or you know, do something with. Buy a podcast? Buy a podcast. <laughs> that's, that's exactly right. Well, think of that yeah. with these small little <clears throat> doses of cancer-causing carcinogens <clears throat> that are at such a low dose it's approved by the FDA to be sprayed on your apple. Well, if you eat an apple a day, that's going to build up in your system. And we're under the assumption that a lot of the cancers that are out there are caused over 20, 30 years of eating these processed foods and some of the things that they have in them that are now have built up in your system to a point. Now it's a problem for 20 years. It hadn't been a problem because of the buildup. It is, um, so that's why we're trying to eat healthy and stay away from a lot of sugary stuff, processed stuff. Uh, another downside to this is the packaging. Remember I said, you know, there are Oreos and Doritos and stuff like that out there. They're not, they're Oreo cookies, but they're not Oreos from Nabisco. And what I mean by that is they're spelled a different way. Instead of uh, Oreo, it's O-E-O. You know, it's spelled a little bit different. So to, to not infringe on copyright. The packaging, the product looks exactly the same. And the reason uh, manufacturers do this is you might have eaten Oreos as a kid. You're used to that product. You're familiar with that product. Now as an adult, you stay away from it. But hey, these Oreos got Delta 9 in it, uh, some THC in it. That's a good snack for me at the end of the day. The problem with that, that's good for you. <clears throat> but if you have kids... They're probably eating regular Oreos. They don't. They won't notice the difference. They, yeah, they, they don't understand the difference because it looks the same. The packaging looks the same. The product looks the same. It tastes the same. Everything's the same. So they're thinking, "Hey, that's my snack." At the end of the day, and they could get into your stuff, and nobody wants that to happen. And I can tell you, law enforcement hates products that are packaged this way. So we do have those products in our store, but they're we only bring in products like that or that are packaged completely different. So nobody can confuse them with the the main what's out there on the mainstream market. So a kid couldn't do that because the last thing we want is for a kid to get into their parents' stuff and all kids get into their parents' stuff. For sure. <clears throat> but it's part of the parent to be responsible with that product, kind of like having a, a you know, alcohol in the house. You don't just have it on the front counter to, you know, usually have in a cabinet somewhere for you. <laughs> this makes me think my grandfather's had his bottom cabinet in the kitchen. Like as a child, I could have crawled into that cupboard. Right. It was right there for you me. You didn't open up the fridge and it was like <clears throat> Jack Daniels and milk and orange juice. It wasn't right there. Yeah, it but was, I, it wasn't a, a cupboard elevated. <laughs> I could crawl could into crawl. his cupboard. Well, you know, the, uh, <laughs> in the 70s, uh, uh, we also didn't wear seatbelts. There's a lot of things that yeah. either we didn't know about or, or even in the 90s. We I mean, regret. I grew up without seatbelts. I mean, sure. I can remember a time when doctors were on TV promoting cigarettes. Yes. I mean, yes. And that's, I can remember when the guy who won the Heisman Trophy walked up there with a cigarette in his mouth, a college student, and accepted the trophy. And I thought that was the most hilarious thing because I'm like, you would never see that today. Yeah. Cops used to just make you pour your beer out. Yeah. Before you get back on the road. Yeah. yeah Craziness. That doesn't happen. No. <laughs> so the packaging and the children issue is also a, a, a it's, I call it a side effect because you, you could run into trouble with that. There's a danger there just with the familiarity with it. So we try to stay away from that. Now, your pets. Oh, my goodness. I can't tell you, especially in a college town, how many kids – they get a little drunk and then they feed their dog beer and the beer, dog gets a little drunk and, you know, he lays down the next day. He's fine. People do not give your pets your CBD or THC products. There are products out there designed for pets, but that's the key word. They are formulated and designed for a pet. And here's why. You could have a CBD, CBD product. With 0.03% THC, which is non-psychoactive, not going to hurt you whatsoever. You give that to your pet, it could kill them. 
because their livers are not designed to process THC. They do have an endocannabinoid system. They, they can take the CBD. That's not no problem. In fact, that's good for them. But the THC stuff, even if it's a small little dose that won't affect you, that could potentially kill your pet depending on your pet size and yeah. metabolism. We don't want that. No, we don't want that. And that's why uh, you should not take these products at home feel good and say, hey, I want my dog or my cat to feel good too. No, they need a, a product that is specifically designed for them, and that is the reason why. Because if you don't do it, for have that product designed for them, it's designed for you and you give it to them, you are putting your pet in a very dangerous situation. Yeah, and we love our pets now. Yeah, we love our I pets. I mean, that's not good, but they do offer – Doggy biscuits and dog treats, dog uh, treats. the tinctures. Uh, there are a lot of things out there for pets, and I can tell you the ones that are formulated for pets, uh, they work great. And So I would gather it's good for these high, um, high-strung high dogs, right? That, oh, yeah. That get a little well, anxious and maybe uh, separation anxiety. It depends on how high-strung the dog is. Like we, yeah. we always tell customers, the bigger the dog, the easier it is to calm it down. Because some of these dogs, like do dachshunds and, and chihuahuas. The little fiery ones. Oh, God. They're so fired up that uh, their bodies can only take so much. But their behavior is so high strung, <laughs> uh, it'll help them. But it's you know it's not like they're yeah. just going to be looking at you like, hey, what's up? Well, you get a big Rottweiler. You know, yeah. just goofing around, give it a little bit of CBD. It's passing out probably. Oh, yeah. It's know? like, I, I just want to go to sleep. <laughs> um, it, but it helps with their mobility. It helps with the separation sure. anxiety. We see a big <clears throat> uptick in sales anytime we're approaching a holiday where fireworks are coming or if we're having big thunderstorms. Uh, it always helps them pets get through situations like that as well. Yes. Now, probably one of the other uh, negatives to an edible is and this is this is with tinctures as well. We talked earlier about how CBD increases your absorption rate with THC by it slows down the the breakdown process of it in your digestive system and therefore more of it can pass through the liver and into the bloodstream. That's a good thing. However, THC is a natural compound. Your body is designed to to absorb it and take it. Things Prescription drugs and the compounds may, that are used to make those are not natural. Mm -hmm. If you take, we always tell people, you can take CBD and still take your medication, but do not take them at the same time. Separate them out by at least an hour so they metabolize differently. And here's the reason why. If you take them at the same time, CBD is going to slow down the breakdown of that uh, prescription drug and the compounds in it. That's not necessarily a good thing for your liver because now the liver is not processing as much of it uh, or it's having a harder time going through the liver because of the slowdown. You could end up with deposits in your liver, deposits within you of that compound, and, and it's going to end up hurting your liver in the long run. You don't want that. The other uh, drawback to it is and, and well, high blood pressure medication, one of the most common medications people take. Uh, over 45, 50 years of age. <clears throat> blood pressure medication lowers the heart rate, which is a good thing. You take that with CBD at the same time, CBD lowers your heart rate. So, and CBD magnifies the blood pressure, it magnifies medications in your system. So what could happen if you take them at the same time, your heart rate could get too low and you could pass out. Nobody wants that, especially since most people take their blood pressure medication in the morning and then go to work. We don't want you passing out while you're driving your car. And when we first opened, we noticed people coming in our store that weren't buying products from us, but they had bought a product somewhere else, and they were having this problem of uh, almost passing out going to work. And we traced it back to the high blood pressure medication and the people selling you the product, not informing you or educating you about this. Uh, and that could be deadly as well because you get out on some of these interstates pass out while you're driving going 70 miles an hour, it's not going to end pretty. And we always used to say this is the difference between somebody who knows how to sell you a product and somebody who knows their product. Uh, we never sell. We educate. You make the best decision. But if you're just selling, you know enough to sell, and then you're leaving the customer maybe uh, uninformed of certain things, and it could be a dangerous situation as well. It's not in, you're not in it for their best interest. 
Correct. At that point, you're, Correct. Just, you're in it for the revenue. <clears throat> and it doesn't mean their int- intentions were nefarious or anything like that. It's just lack of education. And with these products, education is key. It's key to yes. being the retailer. It's key to being the consumer as well. When you go buy edibles, what do you need to look for? And I forgot what episode we talked about it, but I had a lady come in my store, asked me if we had this bag of edibles. And I looked at the bag and I said, no, we don't carry that brand but I see some red flags on that already. She goes, what? And I said, well, one, the bag has a big red fire breathing dragon on it. I can tell you a professional like a doctor or a pharmacist or a PhD chemist probably did not formulate this product because they would not put their name and reputation with uh, an image of a big red fire breathing dragon. Or when you see things that are all about, it's all about getting high. Usually doctors and chemists don't deal with that either. That was one red flag. The other red flag is it said CBD gummies. No milligram dosage on the package whatsoever. So I asked her, I said, how much, how much CBD are you getting with each gummy? Well, I don't know. Well, that's a problem. What was even scarier is there is no ingredient list on the back of the product. Now, you're not, you don't even know what these gummies are made out of. You're hoping they're made out of sugar and some other things that probably aren't good, but you have no idea. Uh, there could be something in there you're allergic to, or there could be something in there that could be harmful for you. My point being, why would you buy a product from anybody? Put it in your body when they're not willing to tell you what that product is made out of. That is a scary thought. And so that was the third red flag. You know, the gummies that we have in our store, what we look for, professional companies, we're looking for uh, who's making them, a professional doctor, uh, pharmacist, PhD chemist. We can trace the makeup of that gummy from the seed in the ground to the gummy, everything in between in case there was ever a problem with it. With the ingredient list, one thing we look for is hemp extract or THC extract versus seed oil. And the reason why, and this mainly pertains to CBD products, uh, you can take the seeds of the plant, grind them into an oil that's going to have a small amount of CBD on it, you can put that into a product and say CBD gummies, but usually there's not a milligram dosage on it. And usually that customer ends up in my store going, how come this didn't work? I bought this at the vape shop across the street. It didn't work. 90% of the time we can flip it over, see hemp seed oil and say, well, it really doesn't have enough CBD in it. Because they never grew the plant. They just took the seeds and grind them down. You got to grow the plant to get the CBD, to get the beneficial factors of this plant. Um, So that's that's one thing I want you to look for on the ingredients. And last is the QSR code. And that's that little, it's not a barcode, but it's it's a square box. You can use a QSR uh, scanner on your phone to, to scan it. What that code will do, is pull up the COA or certificate of analysis of that product to show you exactly how that product tested out with a third party independent tester. And you're, what you're doing is you're checking to make sure what's on that label is in that product, that that label is being honest. Um, Because we have seen a ton of labels that promise you a ton of stuff and they either don't have COAs or the COAs are old and, and they're not telling the truth. Right. Um, and, but you get these things with reputable, reputable companies and you get them with reputable retailers. When you walk into shops and you don't see these things, like I was telling you, there's a, a a place that sells flour. They have it in a big gallon jug. It looks beautiful. It'll have the strain name on it, Bubba Kush. And you'll say, (laughs) Hey, I want seven grams or weigh out seven grams, put it in a bottle and give it to you. And you are happy about your purchase. Well, you've just made a huge mistake. And here's why you don't know what the percentage of THC or CBD level is in that plant. Cause there's no information. There's no label. There's no information. You just know it's Bubba Kush. You don't know what dosage is in there. You don't know. Uh, there's not a QSR code to scan. There's no COAs that you can ask the, do you have a COA on this product? Oh no, no, we don't have that. Uh, well, can I check it? Is there a QSR code on this product? No, no, we don't have those on. That's scary as well. And so we always say, look, when you're buying bud and THCA is the, the new hottest thing will probably overtake edibles here in the near future. You should one, at least at the very minimum, have the strain name 
and have the uh, dosage, the percentage dosage on it, 41%, 20%, whatever the percentage is. Some will have QSR codes on it. Like right now, our flower does not have the QSR code on it. And that's simply because the labels, you can, the labels are only so big. You can only put so much information on them. So we're trying to think of a, another spot we can put the label on maybe the bottom of the jar uh, with a QSR code for people to scan. But you don't want to have so many labels on the jar they can't see the product. We don't have them on there at this point, but we're trying to figure out a way to get them on there. Oh, but the one thing we do have is you can walk in our store anytime, just like with this L.A. Kush Cakes. We have the percentage on it. We have the name on it, but we don't have the QSR label on it yet. If you walked in and said, I need to see the COA for this, we have them in a folder. Every, every time we get a shipment, we get a new one in. Uh, we'll have it in a folder. We can pull it out. And, you know, we look at these before we bottle it up. Mm-hmm. I can tell you whatever's on this label is going to be on that COA because that's where we get our information from. Uh, it's going to tell you if it says 41% uh, THCA on the label, mm-hmm. we can pull the COA and it's going to say 41% THCA on that testing uh, result too. I think those three letters are crucial. <clears throat> In terms of educating people, the COA, COA, that that could immediately stop a red flag or or a bad purchase. If you walk into a store, like anyone, like a vape store or something, I'm interested, but can I see your COA on that? Yeah. If you come in in with that knowledge and awareness of that's available and that's what the purpose is, and that could, and they don't have one or they don't know what it means, then you just walk out the store. Well, right, it, you know well, what I'm it, saying? Like, it, I think everyone should know what the COA is. It's it, good stuff. It should, and it depends. Like <clears> on <throat> all gummies, all edibles, uh, if it's professional packaging from a professional company, it is going to be on there. Right. If it is not on there, I would stay away. Now, but I just think it's good for people to know that such a thing as the COA exists. It, correct. There's a manual you could look into to see all the ingredients and all the nitty gritties of what you're buying. Correct. And like with uh, with us, we don't have COAs on our gummies, and the reason why is every gummy we have has a QSR code on it, and we can scan it and pull it up. So yeah. we don't have that paperwork in the back. But it's still a COA. Yeah, it's still a COA. But with the flower, because of the labeling situation on there, you don't have as much room to put as much information. Uh, we're trying to figure out a way around that so uh, we can get all that information on there but not block you from seeing the product. Maybe a little spot request COA with your front desk or something. It, cor- correct. But I'm talking mm-hmm. about the, the code on the actual label. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's why we had the COAs in the back because we hadn't figured that out yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not rocket science, but it is a marketing thing because we've tried it out with a couple of labels. And what happens is you could get the QSR code, you could see the strain, but you couldn't see anything else. And the other information such as dosage is also important. So we're, we're just trying to figure out what is the best design to get that done. But until that happens, we're being responsible to make sure we have every COA for all of our flower so that uh, if people request and we have people request because they say, look, the other place I used to go, they sell 20%. They say it's impossible to have 40% in what you got, that it's impossible. And we love to pull out the COA and say, look, here's the independent testing, THCA level, what's it say? 40%. Now, oh, well, they say t- these things can be faked. Well, they could be faked. But the thing is, the time, effort, and money it would take to fake some of these things uh one, I don't have the time, money, and effort. I mean, I'm all about uh, keeping everything streamlined. Have good buyers, good wholesalers, uh, good manufacturers bring their product in, and that's going to be beneficial for the customers. And my theory in business is, look, hire good people that know what they're doing. That way you don't have to stand over their shoulder 24 hours a day and and check if they're professionals and they know what they're doing, they're going to produce whether you're standing there or not. And – that's what we do. But yeah, those are the things I want you to look for when you buy a gummy. You want to look for the milligram dosage on the label. You want to look for an ingredient list in the back. And you want to look for a QSR code in case you need to to test it or, or look at the testing results and just find out, hey, is is this manufacturer being honest with me? And that's, that's pretty much it on the gummies. I think it's powerful information. <clears throat> As I, I sit here, I, I learn all of this for the first time myself. It's easier to want to purchase knowing that 
And I think it could be the thing that will make someone that just has no history in this world is interested in, they keep hearing about this stuff, but I'm afraid to take it. I don't know enough about it. Well, and, and that's, that's a, this is what can make them then put them over the edge to then try it and then increase the quality of their life. Correct. And, and that's one other thing. The reason mm. that atmosphere of I'm unfamiliar with it, I don't know, I kind of feel bad for even thinking about it. There's still the stigma. There's, there's still the stigma of it. And I can tell you, I, I'm not the, the guy who grew up in high school smoking weed and stuff like that. I was an athlete. I didn't even walk into my first bar until I was 26. Didn't even have my first really beer in a public place until I was 26. Everything we were told about this plant, I, I'll just mm-hmm. say it, it, was, it, we were lied to. Uh, and we were lied to because the plant comp- competed too well with pharmaceuticals and the pharmaceutical <clears throat> industry eventually got it outlawed as a Schedule One drug so it wouldn't compete. And now it's becoming... Uh, I guess more acceptable now. So that's why you're having it. Mm -hmm. Uh, And you have stores like mine as well as dispensaries. And you know, the reason we got started is if you listen to episode one, it talks about the reasons what got me into this business and none of it was money generated. It was all watching family members take 13 medications and and see the medication was killing them or, or at least doing as much damage as the illness and seeing that with other people that I knew as well. And, uh, that's why we got into this business, and we have to stop talking about it as, oh, I'm using Delta 8 THC, or I'm using yeah. this. You don't need to whisper about it. This is a medication. People are using this in replace of pharmaceuticals, and that's kind of why we got started, just so you could have a choice. It's kind of like uh, the car situation. Congress wanted to, or, or I think the people in power wanted to make, uh, everybody has to buy electric cars. And they voted against that. They're saying, no, people should have a choice, electric or gas, uh, because the infrastructure is not there. Uh, let the free market handle it, because the free market, if it's better, if it's it's better all around, people are going to buy it. When you have to force people to buy something, it's not as good as you think it is. And if you're being forced to buy it, then the people making it, aren't, they don't have to make it as good as they need to be. Because, right. I mean, look at the post office and look at FedEx. FedEx can get you a package overnight. The post office, I can tell you right now, in my neighborhood, <laughs> I probably deliver as much mail as the mailman because he puts so many people's mail in my mailbox that that is not my house. Right. Uh, <laughs> you know, there's... Yes, I know. I get that too. There's some issues with that. So uh, I hope this is helpful to you guys out there. Be looking for our next episode, episode four, which will be airing next week on Wednesday. And uh, until then, all I can tell you is, look, you got the chance to make somebody's day or ruin somebody's day. And it could be as simple as just a smile and a hello and opening the door for somebody. Or if somebody messes up with your McDonald's order, say, look, I get it. You're busy. It's crazy in here. I'm so glad I don't work here. It, it's just messed up. Just make me another one or, or correct it. Uh, some people go crazy over a, a, a order that's wrong. And I've always thought, man, I'm so glad my life is, is not so bad that I have to yell at the McDonald's worker to make myself feel better. And I know it's probably frustration, but it's just like, hey, you can take that situation and and ruin somebody's day or you can make their day by putting you know they put themselves in a bad position by doing messing up hey everybody makes mistakes don't worry about it just take care of it and and i'll wait an extra five minutes is not the end of the world there are more things i gotta worry about than that so i'll leave it off with that go out there and be a hero to somebody rather than a villain you you got the choice to do that If you found this podcast helpful, I'd appreciate it if you took a minute to subscribe, rate, review, and follow us at HempfieldCBD.com. This increases the reach to more people who are trying to navigate through the changing cannabis market and its products so that we can create a more knowledgeable consumer. Take a screenshot and tag me in your social stories to friends. It means the world to me to know that this podcast has positively helped you and that we get to be a part of your journey. Thank you, and until next time, here's to a better life.